Hi everyone. Happy Sunday. Again, here we are. Here we are. But maybe not many of these left. So that's super exciting. I'm so excited. I hope everybody's been continuing to stay safe and had a good time at home and um, enjoying all the time that they're getting to spend with your families and all of that. Um, and I think this is week seven. Seven. Week seven of lessons together. It hasn't even been ten. It hasn't been ten, but it's been more than five. Week seven. So. Does it feel like seven? I, yeah, okay. I, could I, could, I feel like it does. It feels like four. Um, what's been your favorite thing about this time off? Mm. Mine has been relaxing. Really nothing. Nothing's been your favorite? Well, not really because I've done all my projects, so I have no more projects to do. None of them were, like, favorite projects? Mm, not really. I just did, like... I did, all right. Like, well, I you're did, not doing quarantine right, then. Well, I did, um, one of my favorite projects was the one that you got me. It was, like, a frame. Yeah, that thing. one's fun. Um, um, I just personally am really enjoying relaxing. So, I hope you guys are nice and relaxed and have too. So, but I just don't like quarantine cuz I got work and some days I can't go outside and play. And I, I don't know, have but you know what we do play. have our health. We're healthy. <laughs> so that's good. Week 7 at least we're still healthy. So that's good. Um so over the past couple weeks we have talked about Jesus. <laughs> Apparently somebody <laughs> needs a nap. Okay. Um, so we have been talking about Jesus and his life and we talked a little bit about his death and then we went back into his life. <laughs> so just as a little timeline overview of what we've already covered and as a little refresher. Um, so the past couple weeks, the most recent weeks, we have talked about Jesus being an adult. So Jesus went to John to be baptized. So we learned about why we also get baptized because Jesus got baptized, and we're doing what um, our Father says to do. Um, Jesus was also tempted, but never sinned, and that was the week that we learned about. That was last week. No, that was, no, it was last a couple week. weeks ago. But that was a week we learned about how naughty Nani used to be when yes. she was a little girl. Miss Cindy if, was a little bit naughty. If you actually like stay with her for a long time, you could tell that she's a bit naughty. She's no like. So She's a bit naughty. She can be a little, a little bit naughty. Okay. So anyway, and then um, John's followers after that, so last week, John's followers started asking questions about Jesus. And so John the Baptist told people um, to follow Jesus, that he wasn't the one, John wasn't the one that they should be following. He wasn't the Messiah. Correct. And that he um, was only here to prepare people for Jesus to arrive. And then Jesus was there so that people needed to start following him. So today's Bible story is about basically a really special squad. Do you have a special squad? I actually do. <laughs> Who is in your squad? My friend Skylar. Mm-hmm. Anna Grace, mm -hmm. Scarlett. Yes. And, I mean, I'm not really friends with her, but, like, we used to be friends, so she's still kind of in the squad, but it lightened. Yeah. Well, that's a pretty good squad. Um, Jesus had a squad of 12. Mm -hmm. Pretty good. If I put all my friends together, because there's another squad, and it's Lily, Rebecca, Bridget, Meredith, Harper them and usually they come sometimes hang out with us so you got so, multiple squads so you got yeah. squads that like merge yeah that's good that's good it's good to and have that's good because i had my skylar in their squad and then i had lily in their squad and then now they're friends because they would hang out with me so now they're friends yeah now they're friends so you're just one big squad yeah very nice so mm -hmm. when you're making friends what do you look for in a friend I like someone who's really kind to me, really mm -hmm. nice, mm -hmm. and I like I really like friends who make me laugh. Yes, I like people who are, and friends who are loyal yeah. and who are kind, and not only are kind to me, but I really like friends who are kind to everybody. Okay. 
Yeah, and that they just like to be around people, right. and they have a good time, and they just are happy. Right. Happy people. I have a friend that's all the opposite to them. Well, that's okay. You're still kind. Yeah. And that's all that matters. You just be kind. Um, so today's Bible story, we are learning about Jesus' squad. And you may know them by a different name, but for now, we're going to call them his squad. Wait, I have a question for you. Did you ever have a squad when we were in school? Of course I had a squad when I was in school. And squads kind of change and develop over time. Yeah. So, like, who's That's in one thing. might not be in one later in life. Yeah, but luckily, I've had quite a few really, really good friends that have remained my squad and get to hang out with them right. a good amount. Even from friends from elementary school have continued to be my squad as we've grown up. Do I know? So, yes, oh. you do. So, um, today's story is about Jesus forming his squad, like I said, and we are, I guess I can go ahead and tell you that they were his disciples, and you may have heard of that word being used before, but they were the people who were his closest friends, his closest allies, and who he taught to also go teach. So, um, this story today comes from, once again, multiple books, all different versions. It comes from Matthew 4, Mark 1, and Luke 5. No, so Matthew 4. Mark 1 and Luke 5. Oh, okay, okay. So, here is our story. Jesus' ministry had began. Began. <laughs> he traveled around preaching about God and telling people to turn away from their sins. People started talking about Jesus and the things he was teaching. They were interested in what Jesus had to say. Large crowds followed Jesus around and listened to him teach. One day, Jesus was walking along the Sea of Galilee. He saw two brothers, Simon, who was called Peter, and Andrew. Peter and Andrew were fishermen. Jesus called to them, follow me, and I will teach you to fish for people. I'm going to pause because I think it's funny that... Basically, Jesus said, come along, let's go fish for people. <laughs> it is. <laughs> right away, Peter and Andrew dropped their nets and followed Jesus. Later, he saw two more brothers. Their names were James and John. They were in a boat fixing nets with their father. Jesus called out to them, and right away, they got up, lifted, or left their father and the boat, and followed Jesus. Jesus went on and saw a man named Matthew who was called Levi. Matthew was sitting at the tax office. Matthew was a tax collector. Many people didn't like tax collectors because tax collectors were unfair. Jesus called out to him, follow me. So Matthew got up, left everything behind, and followed Jesus. Matthew had a big feast for Jesus at his house. Many tax collectors and sinners came to eat with Jesus and his disciples. The religious leaders saw this, and they didn't think that Jesus should be friends with the people who did wrong things. They complained to the disciples, Why does your teacher eat and drink with the tax collectors and the sinners? Jesus heard the religious leaders and said, People who are healthy don't need a doctor, and people who are sick do. I did not come to invite or I did not come to invite good people. I came to invite sinners to turn back to God. Later Jesus gathered his followers together, and chose 12 of them to be his apostles. Jesus' apostles would work closely with Jesus and would go out and tell others about him. There are, these are the men that Jesus chose. Simon, who was called Peter, Simon's brother Andrew, James and John, who were called the Sons of Thunder, Philip and Bartholomew, Matthew and Thomas, James, the son of Alphaeus, Thaddeus, Simon the Zealot, and Judas Iscariot. So, Why did the, um, what are they called? The, like, apostles? People, disciples? No, the people who came to the disciples. The tax collectors? No, the people who were like, why? The religious they, leaders? Yeah, the religious leaders. <laughs> why uh -huh. did they come to them and say, well, I is Jesus hanging out with? Sinners, but they're probably sinners. 100%. They are sinners. Everybody is a sinner except for Jesus. But sometimes church leaders, or and even now and back then, think that there's only a certain type of people that should be in church, which we know 
that's not true because if that was the case, we wouldn't be in church because we're also sinners. But Jesus came to be with and bring the sinners back to God. That was his sole purpose in life was to teach. <laughs> literally, his sole purpose was to teach everybody about God, and his God. Father, and die to save our sins. Or save us from our sins, not save our sins, but save <laughs> us from our sins. So it was confusing to these religious leaders that he would want to go and hang out with basically the lowest of lows. So it's like, it's kind of like a, like a popular kid hanging out with the bad boy and then like yeah, so what are their friends doing? kind like, of, except that Jesus was popular sometimes and then other times he wasn't. So it kind of just, yeah. you know, depend on the situation. Um, but yeah, I mean, that was the thing. They, he didn't want to be hanging out with people who were perfect. Well, number yeah. one, nobody's perfect. Yeah. But he, didn't, he came to save people. So he was finding lost people. Um, and not only that, he was teaching people who had already been found more about God so that they could go tell other people. So Jesus had his squad, his 12 people in his squad, and he really focused on, um, I mean, he, he focused on teaching everybody, but he also helped them learn as much as they could so that they could then go and teach more people. So if I teach you how to tie your shoe. Good you did. Yes, which after practice, then you can go and teach someone else how to tie their shoe. Like Maverick? Yeah, and then after practice, he can go teach somebody else to tie their shoe, like Goodness. a new baby. Yes, so that's kind of what, like what Jesus was doing. He was spreading the word and creating disciples, and those disciples were creating more disciples. So that's why we should try to be disciples of Christ the best we can and to learn as much as we can and to live that way in our lives so that we can go and help other people know the love of Jesus. So basically just one giant tree of people learning about Jesus. Um, so yeah, that was his, his close inner squad, if you will. <laughs> so so I, you know, I draw really hard to be, um, so the disciples were all busy when Jesus showed up. So how do you think, um, Why are you laughing? cause I'm thinking, how do you think the people that like, you know, Matthew, he was working his job basically. And then, um, <laughs> some of them were fishing and, and doing a job and others were with their dad doing their job. And they were just like, peace out, dad. I got to go <laughs> um, with this guy. And then their dad's just like sitting there like, do, do, do. Um, <laughs> there goes all his free work, uh, <laughs> to follow Jesus. So that would be kind of weird though. Don't you think like you're just hanging out there and then all of a sudden Jesus is like, you two. <laughs> Come along. Well, if that happens, and then they just did. Well, that actually happens at school. There'll be like random teachers coming in and be like, that kid and that kid come here. And you just drop <laughs> everything you're doing and you go. Yeah. So basically that's what Jesus did. He like, was like, you guys over there, come along, yeah, follow it'll me. It'll be like in the middle of the test and two teachers will come in and be like, you two come here. We got to go do something. <laughs> so basically that's what Jesus was doing. And you know what? Jesus was a teacher. Ah, <laughs> craziness. <laughs> Um, I feel like there was something else. There was something else that I can't remember. A question. Oh, what happens? So, like, you know, Jesus came and was like, come along, da 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 What if the guys were like, uh, I don't really think I want to today. Like, that yeah. doesn't really fit in my schedule. I don't think that that's going to be fun for me. The Bible makes it sound like they're just like, they just got up and went. Well, they did. But what if they had responded yeah. and said, I'm busy today. I don't feel like doing that. It's not really something that I want to do. So I'm just not mm, I feel like I'm not they would because I know who Jesus is. Maybe. But like sometimes. Like, maybe like one of their friends. Maybe. But sometimes in life. We pray and we ask for things and either God doesn't give them to us because it's probably just not what he wants like for us. Pony. Yeah, like God's not going to give you a pony. Um, he says or, not right now. yeah, he'll say not right now. Or he'll say, 
well, I don't really like that plan at all. Here is the plan I have for you. And you see his plan and you're like, oh, I don't want to do that, God. That's going to be way too hard for me to do. I don't I don't want to do that. Like kind of like what Jesus did and he, when he died on the cross, he said to God, God, do I have to do this? Do you like think he, that's what he said? Yeah, I read it somewhere in the Bible. He just didn't want to, but God said, this is what you need to do. And he was like, okay, you're right. I'm going to do it. Um, yeah, I mean, what happens if the plan that God sets out for you isn't the one that you want to follow? Yeah. I, I think... How that that's going to be, I, you've, oh, personally, you I think you feel it. There's something in your yes. heart, yeah, basically in your gut, <laughs> um, that is, is compelling you to do something. And sometimes those things are hard to do, but God has a plan for you and he wants you to listen to him and say, he's saying, trust me, I'm going to do this and, and you just need to. Watch what I'm going to do for you. I know this is tough right now, but you just have to watch what I'm about to do for you. You just have to trust me. Trust you. Yes. And and then when you trust him, like they did with Jesus, good things happen. You know? Sometimes. Not always do they happen. Sometimes it doesn't work out in our plan because it's not supposed to be our plan. It's supposed to be his plan. Um. So, yeah. Pretty cool, huh? Mm -hmm. Jesus is a pretty cool guy. Cool guy. He did some cool things, right? Duh. He had a cool squad too. Oh my goodness, I'm just gonna keep calling the disciples a squad from now on. I don't. I don't think that they need to have any other name. We could probably just go ahead and write that into sermons and stuff. Wow. Rick, if you're watching, just start calling them a squad instead of the disciples. I think it works much better. I don't think it does. It sounds funny. <laughs> so. Jesus' squad. Jesus' squad. That's awesome. It sounds funny. It's awesome. So, um, I think that concludes week seven of our at-home Bible studies together. Um, we, Maybe by 10 we'll be back at Yeah, hopefully by 10 we'll be all back together again. That would be fantastic. Um, but we hope that you guys are still staying safe, number one. Enjoying your time with your family, number two. And if you have any prayer requests, again, um, please put them in the comment section so that way we can continue and all of our friends who watch this can continue to pray for you um, and your family or your friends or anything um, as the weeks go on. Um, and we really thank you for joining us for another week. And we'll see you next week. Bye. See ya.